Hello, I am going to discuss anterior pelvic tilt and running because it has been brought to my attention that this is a thing. And I'm hoping that I can shed some light as to why lumbar extension is not necessarily bad for endurance running. Some quotes that I've read recently that discuss this in detail include, your running stride depends on a neutral stable pelvis to allow your leg to fully extend behind you so that it can pull you forward to the next stride. Having an arched lower back comp compromises your hip extension and puts greater demand on the hip flexors to bring your leg forward. So here's the deal. And this was the number one thing that showed up on Google and I tried it in a couple of different searches when I looked at running and pelvis. Some of us have more lumbar extension than others. So if you look at someone like me, and you look at me from the side, you will see that yes, indeed, I definitely have some lumbar extension here. Lumbar extension is normal. And the key to correcting your lumbar extension isn't necessarily to arch or to posteriorly tilt your pelvis as hard as possible, which I also found running blogs that suggested, and lots of videos that suggested one of the ways you should run is to actually tighten your glutes, tuck your pelvis under, and run from here. If you, again, watch someone like me do that, so if I tighten and tuck, and then I try and run, it doesn't feel that good. And I can tell you as someone that spent years trying to fix my anterior pelvic tilt that it doesn't lead to long-term feel goodness in lots of different positions. If, on the other hand, you think about relaxing your ribs, letting yourself gently fall forward, and not worrying about the position of your pelvis, things feel a lot better. Now, you might be thinking, well, the pelvis doesn't really move much during running, when in actuality it does. So if you look at me from behind in just a seated position, and I take my legs out of the equation, and I start to walk myself forward, you'll see that my pelvis is indeed moving. One side moves, and then the other side moves. You can see the same thing in a tall kneeling position. If I come here, and I walk forward, you will see that my pelvis is indeed moving, because... This is the really cool thing about bones. They're designed to transmit force all the way up the kinetic chain, and part of that transmission of force is allowing movement. If you come into a standing position, you can actually try this. Think about clenching one arm, like really clench it, and then start to let your shoulders drop from one side to the other, but keep one arm really clenched. How does that feel compared to the arm that's not clenched? And what happens if you unclench it, right? When you unclench it, you'll feel that there is movement all the way up. Now, different tasks require different amounts of force and modulated tension. If I'm going to pick up a heavy bar, I want less, I want more rigidity and less movement throughout my structure. But if I'm just going to, you know, go about my daily life, I probably want less tension and more reflexive movement through the limb. The same is true of the leg. If I really think about tightening my glutes and then I try and move my leg, it, <laughs> it doesn't feel very coordinated or smooth. If, on the other hand, I just stand, I don't worry about tensing or relaxing, and I let my leg swing, this feels a whole lot better. But again, try it out yourself. See what it feels like to really tense the muscles. See what it feels like to not tense the muscles and see what happens. This isn't to say that some people definitely have lack of control over the lumbar region. They do. I see that. It's not an uncommon thing to see. But generally speaking, if you start to address rib cage position and help the person feel different parts of themselves. And then you work on just basic strengthening exercises that control improves dramatically without you having to consciously cue or tell the person to tighten their glutes while they run.
So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. And I hope that you just try some of these concepts on your own. Again, try tightening your glutes and posteriorly tilting your pelvis. Run a few steps, see how that feels, and then try doing it not posteriorly tilted and tightened and see how that feels. And if you want to add one more layer to it, see if you can find a gentle connection between your ribs and your pelvis. So it's not that you are forcing your pelvis to tuck under. You're just imagining that the ribs and the pelvis are coming towards each other. You're maintaining that connection as you run forward. All right. I feel like that was my public, public service announcement for the day. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.